Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm downstairs for coffee after. A few, few great people here today. Uh, let's start. To, by the way, Tom um, called me this morning. It was his mother in law's last night, and the mother in law called this morning and said they have COVID at their house, so he didn't dare be here. All right, let's start out with uh, joys and concerns. Yes, Melissa? Um, my mom had surgery on Wednesday. She's doing really well. She's still in the hospital. She's got, uh, she's on oxygen and she has one more uh, tube. I'm gonna see her right after church. Um, she's really doing really good. She's hoping, we're hoping to have her out by Monday. So please continue your prayers and pray for her healing and me and having to deal with everything that comes with it. And my dad, we all need prayers. Thank you so much. Okay, so you'll hold that for Holly. Yep. Who well, should be home tomorrow, you hope. Yep. But surgery went well, huh? Oh, it went great. Yep, she had triple bypass in case you didn't know. Yep. Okay, any other? Darlene. Um, first, my great niece, Ella. She was nine days old. She hasn't been out of the hospital yet. They wow. think she might have had a stroke, and um, uh -huh. she cannot breathe on her own. <clears throat> but she's a little fighter. She's pink, and she's gorgeous, and wow. hopefully she'll be okay. So if you didn't all hear that, it's your great um, niece? Great niece, Ella. Ella? And you said she's not out of the hospital after nine days? Yep, she's to oh. take her to walk the next day. Oh. The others. Um, I'm sorry, John, but we we're going to pray for you because John had some health concerns last week, and we just found out about them, so we're going to keep you in your prayers and you're feeling great. You feel well, better? Or? Well, I was in the hospital. Oh, four or five. Wow. So John's been in the hospital a few days. Wow. He liked the food. What's that? He liked the food. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Said he liked, he liked the food. Yeah, the food. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? Well, I wasn't going to tell him, but he would have left. That'd be um, I have a joy and a concern. Um, I have a joy for the church for supporting the fundraiser last night. I do not know how much they made, um, but it was very well attended, and they had very nice raffle items, and a lot of, we saw a lot of people bidding on the raffle items because they were very nice, and a, a lot of people coming out for the meal. Um, and the concern, obviously, for Fernando, his injury is a, I, I did talk to his wife, it's a brain stem injury. And uh, he is improving enough that they are looking into rehab. So hopefully uh, they'll find a nice rehab for him and that will, he will progress. He may have to go to New York City. So. And so that person had, what was hit by a drunk driver head on or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A car accident and yeah. um, Okay, any others? Um, I don't see announcements here, but we'll do announcements. Any announcements? Yes, Melissa. Annual reports are next are due next week. Annual reports next week. And Ray? Yeah, and then the, the meeting, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, the meeting dates have changed to February 18th. Is that right? February 18th? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yes. meeting. so um, there's no hobo soup, we'll be making soup and bring a sandwich, there'll be some available. But, yeah. Right, so what Ray is saying is the annual meeting is moved to February 18th, a week late, later. Because we have we hadn't gotten our all the reports together, we have to get it together in time. So, and again, Melissa needs the reports and next week, but Latest next week, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Any others? Okay, we'll begin uh, worship with our opening hymn 298. So you'll stand if you can. And...
seated and join me in the opening prayer in your bulletin. Gracious Christ, you came to the fishermen with the prophet John was taken away. Come to us now as we fear losses of our own. Grant us courage to cast aside the nets that bind us. Follow you in the true freedom and the newness of life. Help us to be faithful disciples that we might inspire others to follow in your ways. Amen. And now we'll be in silent prayer. inspiration, whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts. We gather today in the frigid cold seeking some warmth. <coughs> warmth from the warm place. Warmth from warm memories. Warmth from your love. Warmth from fellowship and companionship. God, you gather us together. You gather disciples. Your kingdom is ever new and renewing. Though it is old, there is always something happening. Always something exciting, a challenge to be met, an obstacle to be faced. We lift up this morning those who were named in our time of opening prayers, <coughs> Baby Ella, Holly, Fernando Gale, John, and others who need your love and care. Be with them and their families and their loved ones, all the caregivers and the medical employees and the doctors and nurses who will be working to bring them health and wholeness. Restore what can be restored. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
in the bulletin. Generous God, make us generous in your image. Make us compassionate in your image. Make us faithful in your image. Bless these gifts and all the gifts we offer, that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. were not the first 
things to be written from the New Testament. Uh, those would be the letters, because those were correspondence. They happened immediately. But at some point, people sat down to write the whole story of the ministry of Jesus. Uh, Mark is believed to be the first gospel that was written that is included in uh, the Bible. And it is shorter than the others. It doesn't is include as many details as the others. Uh, you know how they say journalism is the first draft of history? It's kind of like the first draft version where he includes uh, what he feels is important. Uh, a lot of people have a favorite gospel. Mark is not my favorite gospel, but of course I like all of them for different reasons. And what I like about Mark is the level of excitement. It's almost like he's out of breath, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this <coughs> happened. He uses the word immediately a lot. You didn't hear it in this passage, and sometimes they translate it a little differently in the more modern translations, but it's very, all of this is very exciting for Mark. And what's great about that is that it brings up a really important point for us. And that is that the stories that we hear from Christmas till Palm Sunday are all stories about exciting and new developments in the ministry of Jesus. First, Jesus is born. Then we, we miss that Sunday, but we hear about Jesus' baptism by John. And then the next week we hear about this story that is said to happen right after Jesus is baptized, uh, which is the story of Jesus beginning to collect some uh, followers. And those followers finding Jesus so compelling from what they know about him that they just drop their nets from their, that's what they do for a living, they're fishermen, which was uh, fish, uh, fish or staple food. Uh, especially for poor people, but also rich people eat a lot of fish. So, but these guys, they Jesus calls them and they drop their nets. Uh, they even mention two of them leave their dad behind. I'm sure that went over real well. They're like, Dad, I don't want to work for you anymore. Bye bye. Um, and they follow Jesus immediately. And that is very new, like, and very exciting. That Jesus is gathering these followers and all these things keeps happening and it's very very exciting and when you think about it the New Testament is a story about exciting events and changes that are constantly happening constantly we're going to hear the stories of Jesus ministry and its uh, growth and the things that Jesus does uh, increasing there are more healings you're going to hear about Jesus feeding a whole bunch of people you're going to hear about more and more spectacular and impressive miracles and also you hear the rumblings in the background of people who aren't really happy happy about all this happening for their own reasons but Excitement, 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 which kind of reaches a crescendo of Palm Sunday. Then, of course, you have Holy Week. Uh, and it seems it all is lost. But, of course, like any good story, there's an even more spectacular event. But that isn't the end either. Easter isn't an ending either. Easter is a whole new beginning. It is the beginning of the story that we're going to hear after Easter of the founding of the Christian church and how rapidly it grows and the challenges and obstacles, but also the awesome uh, miracles and the awesome achievements that happen in a relatively few short decades where the church goes from being just this group of people who uh, were around Jesus to a really large, widespread, impressive organization so that is the story and it's constantly a story uh, uh, in the Bible of 
excitement and uh, facing new challenges and having new ideas and implementing them. Now, our church, our congregation has been here for a very long time, since the 1700s. I think 1740, 39. 1740, 39. 1739. And this was the organization that came here to this place, which used to be called North Ferry, and started everything. They started a church and they started a town. The town wasn't incorporated for a while, but there really wasn't any civilization here at the time. At one time, there maybe was some Native Americans, but they were not here at the time that the folks came. And they started this place. They started this church. They started a town. And there was a lot of excitement and a lot of newness at that point and exciting things and new things have continued to happen, not just in this church, but in other churches. We keep making changes and new things keep happening at this church. In the past several years, we have come up against some challenges. One of those challenges was the pandemic. And so we had to come up with the challenge of we can't really meet in person in the winter when it's cold. And so we learned very quickly and very rapidly about technology. Technology that we have continued to employ. We still uh, are videotaping our services and putting them online. We're still using the screens that we adopted uh, shortly, right around the time the pandemic started and when we weren't able to hand out anything physical or we were afraid of that. Um, so uh, changes keep happening. Now we're bringing a counseling center in uh, to be part of our organization. They have a separate organization, but they're, they very much want to be part of uh, what's happening here and contribute and receive con contributions from us and have a lot of interchange and interplay. And uh, that's what, those of us who went last night, that's what we experienced, I think, a sense of, it. Uh, they had a fundraiser here for uh, one of their uh, clinicians whose husband was in an accident. And uh, it was just kind of exciting to have a big event here. And uh, we, we just kind of showed up and paid our money and participated and they did everything. And uh, there were a lot of people and there was a, a really good feeling in the place. Um, so it's something new and exciting. There's always new and exciting things happening. So why don't we always see them? Human beings have a tendency to focus on the negative. Now, that's important because the fact that you're here is because so one of your ancestors was focusing on the negative and they heard a noise in the woods or whatever and they were like, that might be a bear. That might be a tiger or a lion. And they behaved accordingly. So we have this constant focus on, but what about this? And, oh, that, if I don't take care of that, that could be a bigger problem. Those of you who are homeowners, you know that's something. There's a little thing going on, and uh, you learn from experience. You have, like, a parent or somebody who tells you, oh, you got to take care of that right away. And then if you don't, it becomes a bigger problem, and then you discover, yeah, my parents are right. If a little thing happens, I need to take care of it right away. So that's just kind of baked in the cake, that we focus on negativity. And if we can't figure out how to fix it, then we become very discouraged and very down. If 
because we want to do something. And if we can't, sometimes the thing that we want to do is so overwhelming that we're kind of paralyzed. And that happens everywhere. It happens in organizations. It happens to individuals. It's easy to be overwhelmed. It's easy to focus on the negative. Those who teach church leaders how to help churches will say, instead of focusing on negatives, we need to focus on positives. Instead of saying, well, this, how, this is how we used to do church, and we need to figure out how we can do church the way we used to do church, and have that be how we will be in the future. The past isn't going to come back. You know, and I, a lot of us have good feelings about the past. Good things happened in the past to us. We have good memories. But I don't really want it to be 1950 again. Not that I was around for 1950, but I don't want it. There were some bad things, too. So we want to live in the present, and we want to focus on moving forward in the future. So they tell you, instead of trying to look for little problems, to find out what the fire is, where the fire is burning, and bring wood to it. So that is my question for you today. What would make you want to drop what you're doing and work on building a new fire? Because that is the kind of excitement that people have found in this faith for thousands of years. And it's still here. We just need to believe it. We just need to act accordingly. Amen. So we have a newer tradition here. And we didn't, we didn't get to do it in December, I think, because there was a lot going on in December. I don't know if you guys know there's a holiday called Christmas and it takes up a lot of energy. Um, but it's, uh, uh, we offer blessings to people who have something to celebrate uh, during the month. And so if you had a December one and you got missed, um, but you can come on up and um, I will have a prayer of blessing. January that's good, which is that she finally uh, is finished with surgeries and such for her broken arm slash shoulder.
Are you starting my dating profile? A year older than he was last year. <laughs> now let us join together in our final hymn. <laughs>